Hey, this is Alexander. And I'm Jeanette. And this is Haunting TV's very first book versus movie for... Horns. <laughs> which is... The movie and the book. The book, movie and the um, book, yes. Movie directed by Alexandre Aja. Sorry if I mispronounced that. And uh, the book written by Joe Hill. Joe Hill. Joe Hill. Joe Hill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, uh, the premise for the film itself and the book is that this gentleman, uh, Ig played by Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, his girlfriend has been raped and murdered. And he is trying to figure out who done it. Uh, so the, the film is more of a who done it, whereas the book is more of a, a drama, straight drama. Yeah. Um, and also, in his search to find answers to her murder, he somehow starts growing horns, mm -hmm. hence the name Horns. Um, and it brings these magical powers out where he can uh, just draw confessions and information from people, and he has some sort of satanic power of persuasion. And his world been literally turned upside down. So one of the opening shots of the film is literally the world upside down, and he's drunk on the floor, and then it flips right side up to kind of open up the picture and, and start start the film. And um, once he he basically denounces the fact that, you know, kind of denounces God because, uh, you know, she, his girlfriend went to church every day and then she was still raped and murdered. And he was kind of, you know, one of those things where what kind of a world would this be where God would allow this to happen? And so uh, he sprouts these horns the day after. And um, at that point, he starts to realize some weird stuff's happening. Uh, everybody in town starts kind of uh, going, digging into their own deepest, darkest desires and just acting them out. And he kind of, wherever he goes, people will just be like, oh, you have horns on your head. Let me confess this horrible thing that I'm thinking right now to mm -hmm. you. And then he's like, why, why are you doing this? Um, and as his journey continues, he starts to become more and more comfortable with the power of the horns. And in the movie, he really starts using that to his benefit. And in the book, it just takes him forever to figure out how to use it. And like, it, it was so frustrating. It's like, just ask around town, would you please? And in the in, movie, in the he book, does. Yeah, he goes the, like hunting. In, in the answers. movie, he does. And so we have Ig, and then we have his girlfriend. Marin Williams. Marin Williams. Who's and played then, by Juno Temple in the film. And then you have his best friend, Lee. Mm -hmm, who's played by Max Mingala. And then you have the police officer, the young kid, young boy that becomes oh, a police officer. Eric, Eric, Eric yeah. Kennedy, um, whom I did not write down who acted that out. And who's um, also their their friend? I can't, I keep forgetting her character name, but she was kind of the Glenna. Uh, Glenna. She is kind of uh, loose with the morals. She like she <laughs> likes to uh, she likes to have fun with the boys, and that doesn't really work out for her. She's also in love with Ig, and that uh, becomes kind of problematic for her because uh, he he kind of knows, but has never really acted upon that and so she's like the outsider in the group so you you get to uh, kind of flashback to when they were kids and they're all friends and everything was fine and how ig and marin ig and marin yeah. marin uh ig met marin and so uh you get a little bit of a setup of that and then you flash forward to now and as they're all adults kind of seeing where they are um and one of the central characters i would say it's a character the location is, is ends up being a character is this tree this tree house Mm -hmm. uh, that Ig and Marin uh, frequent uh, as they, they get to know each other. He found this, this tree ha abandoned tree house and, he's, and it becomes like their place. And in the movie, it's a literal tree house. They have this place that is like their sacred place. It's their Garden of Eden, if you will. Um, and they keep coming back to it. It's, it's like where all of their firsts kind of happen. Yeah. Um, and in the book, it's not a real tree house. They call it the tree house of the mind and it only shows up twice. Yeah. Once where it's, you know, in the, in the movie you have this beautiful, beautiful romantic scene and in the book there's this just kind of moment of teenage joy and passion that happens there and then it just disappears. Yeah. Um, and then it ties back in way, way, way later as, I guess it's more metaphorical treehouse <laughs> whereas in the film it's very uh, a literal treehouse and it's very central to the plot mm -hmm. and in the progression of the film and it's kind of portrayed as kind of the uh, garden of eden uh like the tree where uh, original sin or originated and the snake tempted uh adam and eve 
And so that's very much a literal element you see in the film. Uh, even when, they, when there's a point where there's a lot of snakes showing up, it, it really ties into that very, very literally. There's a lot of devil iconography that shows up, and they, they totally have a lot of fun with it. There's mm -hmm. um, just moments in the book where they're like, hey, here's a little devil figurine, or hey, he's grabbed a pitchfork, and there's swarms of snakes surrounding him, and you know they're constantly just jabbing the joke forward in the book, and they do that, I think, better in the movie. It keeps a lot more levity in the sure. movie. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there's, like, there's one particular scene where there's a brawl that happens and then fire ensues, and uh, you see it in the trailer, actually. Um, and it's just this beautiful, funny, funny moment where he's just exiting, there's flames surrounding him, and it's just ridiculous. I think that's what I really, I really loved about the film is even though it's a really dark story at its core, a really dark, kind of depressing story at its core, it's really fun. It's a fun, fun movie. Uh, when people start acting up around Ig, because it's almost like if, if Lucifer were to walk the earth and his just aura would be seductive and allow and make people kind of tap into their deepest desires. It's kind of like that by Ig walking around with these horns, all of a sudden people just start doing crazy things and having sex and 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 uh, doing drugs and you know running around and doing crazy yeah. things because they just feel like they, they, they're they free. They can just do whatever. And uh, so it, it does placate to the, the concept of, you know, or play to the concept of, uh, you know, the worst of humanity and, and uh, you know, that people can be really, really ugly. Mm -hmm. And so you have Ig that has these literal horns, but everybody's ugliness is also kind of wearing on their sleeve by just the way they act, including his parents. Yeah, and, and in the movie, they have more fun with that. But in the book, it's, it's so, like, just honestly brutal. Mm. The Joe Hill just, like, tears open humanity and then pokes at its innards and makes you watch. That's what it feels like <laughs> when you read that book. You really see the worst of humanity. And uh, if, I mean, that's one of the good things about yeah. the book, though. You, you're, you're thinking the whole time while you're reading it. You're not just experiencing a story. I haven't read the book yet, so I want to read the book now because uh, I can appreciate it when an artist is unflinching with their uh, views on how they want to approach a story. They're just, they're just, this is how I'm going to tell the story. This is how it's unfolding, and I'm going to stick to my guns. I don't really care how the audience is going to take it in. I'm just going to give you this world as I see it. And, and uh, I think that's very admirable. I think the, the, the filmmakers were more thinking about making it more of a commercial film, and that made the film very interesting and digestible. But I feel like the, the book and the movie work really well together, paired off mm -hmm. to kind of see how one works versus the other. Yeah. And one, you know, the book does certain things better than that movie, and the movie does certain things better than the book, so they both kind of have their strengths and weaknesses. One, one of the things the book does better is, like almost any book, you mm. really get the time you need to develop the characters. You yeah. really get to understand all of the moving parts and all of the history. Whereas, like, in the movie, there's certain key characters that just get super glossed over. Yeah. Um, like the cop, like Lee, the best friend, like even even Terry, the brother, you really don't see enough of that because they really just, you know, trimmed off the fat and focused in on the core of the story, which sure. helped the pacing because yeah, the yeah. book is very slow. Um, but I do wish that they had taken some of that character development from especially the best friend and people like that and brought that from the book into the movie. Well, I mean, I definitely see that they wanted to do things differently. Mm -hmm. Where, and, and from what you were talking about the book, that the book gets the idea of uh, who done it out of the way pretty quickly and yes. just focuses on when is Ig going to take action for this thing once he figures out what's going on. Whereas in the film, it's more of a murder mystery. You have no, Ig doesn't know who, what's going on and you're more put in you know, his perspective where you don't know what's going on, he doesn't know what's going on, and he's trying to figure out, and it becomes more of a straight-up murder mystery with a lot of dark comedy. And uh, that becomes a lot of fun. I mean, definitely there's different characterizations, like the, the cop mm -hmm. is, uh, who's also a friend of, of Iggs. Yeah, that was um, a major character difference. Yeah, in, it's, it's, in the movie, you actually end up kind of liking him. Well, yeah. And then in the book, you, don't. you hate him. Like, yeah. There's some seriously dramatic fight scenes that happen between him and Ig, and you're just like, oh my god, I hope he gets it. He's just So you, yeah, you don't really know what's going to happen with this character, but, you know, um, definitely there is still ugliness in the character. You do, do see the ugliness, but then they added an additional element which made him a lot more likable. 
uh, which added a little bit more to the drama. So I thought it was an interesting choice and uh, it worked to do with great effect, but it, it definitely changed how you felt about a specific character. But I feel like when you watch your book translated to film, you want some surprises. And I mm -hmm. feel like the way they added these little bits of surprises in there that weren't in the book and changed a little bit of the dynamic, it didn't change, it didn't change the overall story. It just changed how you felt about that one character. But it didn't change the ending of the film, uh, the, the, of the, you know, where the story went. Uh, overall, it, it still continued continue to have that spirit, correct, mm -hmm. of, the, of the book. Main, uh, main story point stayed the same, but yeah. some of the details changed. And um, they totally, in the movie, threw you a bunch of red herrings to mm -hmm. just keep you guessing as to the, the murder mystery part of it, which yeah, definitely yeah. added to the film. And in the book, you're, you're, I know who did it. And then you're just like reading to figure out when Ig is going to get it through his thick horned skull, <laughs> what happened. Uh, so one point I wanted to get into was the snakes. Uh, the snakes were just a fantastic visual uh, uh, element to the film, and I thought it was kind of fun that, you know, um, Daniel Radcliffe in Harry Potter, he has his parcel tongue, and he has to deal with the snakes a lot. There's a lot of snake imagery and snakes throughout the film, and then you get to see... <laughs> kind of ties together. <laughs> ...him with the snakes once again in this film, that he can speak to snakes, or they come to him, they, they obey him. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of fun. I, mean, I, I don't think it was an intentional thing from Daniel understanding that element, or maybe he did, but I know the filmmakers really keyed into that to get the Harry Potter fans interested, and I, mm -hmm. I, I dig the film quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I do feel that Daniel Radcliffe is doing a very good job of picking his projects, and uh, he's... This is a particularly dark role for him, and yeah. he just really nailed it. And the American know? accent. And and the American accent. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. This entire time, <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh yeah, American accent. Oh, wait, yes. Yeah. Um, and one one of the differences that are in the book versus movie is in the movie, the snakes he kind of has more control of them, and like they become an extension of his power. Whereas yeah. in the book. It's very much, they're, they're kind of just attracted to him, and they, they just want to be around him. It's like they just can't help it. Yeah. And the snakes play a much, much bigger role in uh, the end fight sequence, and that's all I'll say, because I don't want to ruin either. As far as what you told me, and just, just one other last thing, is that um, the Ig himself actually takes a lot more advantage of his powers in the film than he mm -hmm. does in the book, and um, he's a little more vindictive. Um, and so you might not like the direction he kind of goes in, or you might be completely on board. It's, it's really kind of subjective to the viewer, uh, whether you're on board with his uh, way of doing things, way, his way of actually you know, going around and, and trying to investigate and getting people to confess because they, they have, that's something we never mentioned at all. He, they, when he talks to them, they have to, he asks them a question, they have to tell him uh, the truth. So that's one of the things that he does to uh, uh, try to figure out what's going on is he talks, talks to these individuals throughout town from person to person, including Marin's father, mm -hmm. and tries to figure out whether you know he knew what was going on or if he can clue him in. To just try to get him an idea of why things are happening the way they were and, and, and kind of piece things together little by little. He's just getting little elements of what happened that evening from everybody, one after another, and all of it ties together, and he really just wants to know if the father knew what was going on at all. Yeah. And so that it, it's, it's a really interesting, it's very dark, uh, it can be very depressing, but because of all the dark comedy that's strewn throughout, it's much more digestible. Mm -hmm. I think you said the ending in the book was a little more satisfying than the film. Very much so. Yeah. I actually really prefer the ending in the book to the one that happened in the movie because you're allowed to hate certain characters more. Yeah. So that's more satisfying. Um, removing the surprise at the end, kind of helped you like get that catharsis. Yeah. For you, you know, you finally got it, which is it just feels so much more satisfying. And then the the movie does something very poetic in how certain people fade away. Um, and in the book, it's just so much more aggressive and yeah. brutal. And I'll leave it at that. I, re I, I really preferred the ending to the yeah. book. Probably because it was also a much more brutal read, so by the end you needed something really powerful to just make up for it. If yeah, that makes and, sense. and I, I, <laughs> it's still, it's not, they really don't hold back entirely. I mean, it's still a pretty brutal ending to the film of how things wrap up, but I feel like 
definitely I wanted more. I felt like they were really going for the YA audience and they really didn't want to uh, give them too much graphic violence. There was definitely an, a, a decent amount of graphic violence, but they didn't want to go too far or linger on it too long. So I think they definitely were a little easier on, on mm -hmm. the audience for that, but I feel like it might work for some people that way that it wasn't so graphic. Yeah. Uh, but it was still great. I, I really enjoyed the film. I think you really will too. If you're okay with dark dramas, uh, you know, there's a rape scene. It's not held on too long, but it's there. Uh, but it's a really fantastic film. I think it's one of uh, Daniel's uh, best performances. Absolutely. Uh, and I, that's one of the promos we're saying. It's his best performance to date. I think it definitely it ranks up there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I really did enjoy the film. So in conclusion, um, I give the book only four out of five stars because it really does have a rape revenge thing and that's not necessarily my cup of tea but it was very well written it was fun to read and uh, it's thought-provoking so it's definitely worth reading and even with conjunction with the with the movie because there's enough differences to really enjoy both and wh how do you feel about the movie? I, I give the film uh, about a four and a half stars I really enjoyed it quite a bit I think tonally it kind of feels something in line with maybe the first Hunger, Hunger Games film Mm -hmm. uh, about as far as the amount of drama and uh, there's some levity in there but it's very serious overall you know there's a serious thing but I think it definitely has a lot more comedy in it than the Hunger Games Absolutely. did quite a bit more and uh, so yeah if you it, I really enjoyed it I give it four and a half stars uh, but we want to hear what you think uh, so once again this is Alexander from Haunting TV I'm Jeanette and I want you to tell us what you think about Horns the movie or Horns the book or if you haven't seen it are you excited to see it just put it in the comment section below and let us know what you think and we hope you enjoy this, our first book versus movie for Horns. Yep, for Horns. And enjoy, and once again, see, see you in your nightmares. nightmares. <laughs>